It has been alleged that the thief people, my people, have an absurd tradition of offering their wives to visitors as a show of hospitality. Yet it has been very difficult for me to defend an allegation I do not really understand. The thief people of Benue State are the fourth largest ethnic group in Nigeria. They are by far the largest ethnic group in the Middle Belt of Nigeria, best known for their veil and hospitality. A gesture that has been misunderstood and greatly spoken ill of by people who know half or just a bit of it. The question of whether the thief people gift their wives to visitors for sexual pleasure, as widely speculated, has remained unanswered for years. I seek to know more about my cultural background and I'm quite sure you are also interested to know more about this controversial claim. So we join it together. I set out on a journey to my ancestral home and other clans in Tivland to inquire of the very old if this bizarre act of benevolence was practiced before now. Of course, to ask my grandmother if there's a the slightest opportunity that my biological grandfather was a visitor in our home. I am visiting my hometown Kusu, where I was born and raised for a few years. I have not been here for some time, and I have an idea what to expect because my people are warm and amazing. Of course, they love me very much. Inasmuch as I'm coming to seek answers, I am more delighted that I will get to see people I have not seen in such a long time. <laughs> The women in my village are very hardworking. As you can see, it is almost 3 p.m. and they are here peeling cassava after a harvest work on their farms. It is very tedious as there are no mechanized implements to help. I hope that one day I provide my entire village with the basic necessities of life to ease the toilet. But then I remember why I'm here and I pop the bizarre question. Ah, <laughs> This is Tombo area in Buruku local government of Benue State. On this side is Tombo Mbati, while across lies Tombo Mbala. Here is River Buruku, a big river that flows through to River Benue. It's a beautiful sight to behold, and we are crossing over to visit Mr. White Kyoga Ikiave, who is said to be a retired school administrator with a vast knowledge of the culture and tradition of the Tif people. 
We are here at Mr. Chahu Mingi's compound. He is 105 years old and one of the oldest in the clan. He is one of the few persons alive with an in-depth and unbiased knowledge of the Tif culture and tradition. Chimango <laughs> I am driving to Shongo, which is one of the local governments in the state with beautiful scenery. I've always wanted to come here to have a good view of the wonders of nature, and it's amazing what I've seen. Isn't it fascinating how this lady crushes these strong rocks into tiny pieces with just a hammer? She represents the typical tea woman, strong, hardworking, and highly industrious. <laughs> Quasi a noya would have been a hair and quan o yaw, no moke o yawna, and a kai o was a cohona or na boy and a woe yawna. She has this for quarag. He got a color and grasses. She was a very as a for quarag. Right Honorable Ngunan Adingi. She's a state lawmaker, a philanthropist, motivational speaker, and a mentor to a lot of young girls in Nigeria. She's a well respected woman in Tivland. She passes for the contemporary Tiv woman. I've been married for 16 years now, and I cannot remember any time that my husband's friend comes and visit, yeah. and I'll be given to the man for sex. My husband will probably kill a man if any of his friends would even dare to think that I'm supposed to spend the night with him. I don't think it's what we tea women are known for. Lots of tea people have found this assertion highly disturbing. For those who have been privileged to acquire an education, it is more horrifying to see that people of other cultures believe so strongly in this claim that some have gone further to produce materials implying it is true. 
Others have also posited that the Tief people did not have laws guiding marriages and by implication, anyone was at liberty to befriend the wife of another. Uh, I am very proficient in Tief customary law and practice. I retired as a pioneer president of Benue State Customary Court of Appeal. So, in that vintage position, I am in a position to speak with authority on chief customary law. All I can say is that it is the fruit of ignorance. It is an insult to chief nation. It is a disparaging comment which has no basis. Those who make that assertion can never point to a single instance where they or any of their relation stayed a night with a thief man and that thief man offered his wife to share the bed with. But we who are learned in law, we are only waiting. If we see such a thing in print, we will use the necessary facility to sue for libel. We can sue and claim damages on behalf of thief nation. It is an insult to the collective goodwill of thief people. I want to state categorically that there was never a time and there has never been a time and there will never come a time that the chief person that I know and I'm privileged by our tradition to be the spiritual leader and traditional leader would loan out his wife to a good friend on a visit to his home. The thieves are generally polygamous. The thieves live in family circles. A man with many wives has a heart for each of his wives wherein they sleep. This heart is also used as part of cooking, as a kitchen. They sleep there with their children, if, they, if the woman has a livestock and has no uh, heart for the goats, he can even share that heart with the livestock, chicken included. Now, if a visitor comes to an elder man, he may be a total stranger. And if he is a stranger, the usual step that follow is an inquiry as to who the person is, where he is coming from, where he is going to. If it becomes necessary for the person to sleep, the thief in their usual generosity will give the person abundant food and as night sets in, depending on the status of the visitor, if the person is an elderly person and the person receiving him, that is the host, is also an elderly person. They usually sleep in their day. They share their day. Talking throughout the night because the person receiving the visa doesn't know this visa, doesn't know his intention, whether he is coming with an evil plan like witchcraft, let us settle there. If it's a younger person coming who is a stranger, then the usual thing, and this is where they, 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 they make that uh, disparaging remark. The elder man will call one of his wife, please arrange a commendation for this man. In that situation, the woman will sleep in her bed with her children, if she has children. Then another mat or bed will be arranged for the visitor. And in those days that we didn't have machines to farm, the more children, particularly the male children they had, the more wives you married, and the bigger your farm would be, or whatever the produce you produce. Whatever you do to a tip person, don't touch his wife. Indeed, there are no cases where women used to cheat their husbands in the past, telling the husband that my visitor is a relation of mine coming from my home. 
In that case, usually we will give them a commendation, share the commendation with your sister. But again, some suspecting host will take step to study. Maybe at the night, when all is gone, the man will secretly go and stand behind the hut, get an air of of what is going on. He will try to find out. And this is why we find the expression in some stiff songs of old. There was one. I knew it in the early 40s. This man said this type of visitor who is claiming to be an in-law what type of in-law whenever i'm not around they're speaking in tunes speaking quietly but when i'm around they begin to speak louder for everybody to hear uh the song is from my area here Agabeshe <laughs> One anger, Moya, won't have a moon. Won't get a yosu te tega. Won't ever silence him. I won't do it. Wantare Paul Unongo who is one of the greatest men alive in Nigeria today, is a man who played a key role in the development and peace of Nigeria. At the advent of the end of the civil war, when Nigeria needed reunification and reintegration, Paul Unongo's no victor, no vanquished policy was adopted by General Yakubu Gawan, which greatly saw the successful reunion of Nigeria. He is credited to have established the Department of Psychology in the University of Lagos, which was the first of its kind in Nigeria. Aside this magnificent achievement, he is also a spiritual leader and a custodian of the Tif culture. There are a few persons primed to clear the air on this matter, and he is one of them. I want to state categorically that there was never a time and there has never been a time, and there will never come a time, that the chief person that I know, and I'm privileged by our tradition to be the spiritual leader and traditional leader, would loan out his wife to a good friend on a visit to his home. If he tries anything like that, he will break his head. He won't even think about the friendship. A wife is the most precious. It approximates almost a property, the most precious possession of the tea person. I'm speaking philosophically because a tea person looks at a wife as somebody that will give him his self-respect by producing children. The more children you have, the more respected you are among the tea people. And I know from where the story started, there was a judge here who had a friend that slept with somebody's wife. And the, court, the thing was a sensation in the court. And during the process, they well, uh, just prostitution or sleeping with somebody's wife is not a crime against within the tea law. That's hogwash. Tea people, if you sleep with their wife, you commit adultery. If you take their wives and they can, they will kill you. And they will never loan their wife to a friend and say, my tradition to show you that I love you very much. Use my wife for that I know. Never happened. Thousands of years ago, it never happened. Today, it doesn't happen. And those of us who remain traditional, touch our wives, you lose your friendship. Oh.
Interestingly, adultery and fornication are seen as sex taboos in Tivland. In the days of old, the punishment accrued to violators was death. The contemporary Tiv society still frowns at the act, even though offenders are no longer killed but severely disciplined for doing so. Despite the hurtful claim by misinformed critics, the hospitality of the Tiv people has not changed. They are still warm and receptive to strangers, and they still offer food to their visitors, not wives. The Tiv is the chief custodian of the Tiv culture and tradition. If there is anyone who is in a better position to educate the world about the Tiv culture and history, that would be His Royal Majesty, Bea Otiv Ochiviri Professor James Otesi Yozua Ayate. Not only is he the Toti, he hails from the ancestral home of the Tif people, the Kwande Mountains. I'd like to plead your majesty to tell the world in an official term as it's being captured on the camera, if this act was maybe practiced in the past that we, the youth, don't know of. That is the main reason why I went out to do this research, to ask people that are as old as a hundred years. Maybe this was practiced in the past and I didn't know, and right now I don't have the facts to defend myself when someone poses this question to me. So if this was not done in the past and it's not practiced anywhere in any part of the land, we should refute the claims boldly and clearly, and it goes on air to different parts of Nigeria and beyond. Thank you. In reacting to this issue, or to this question, I want to state, number one, that my name is His Rare Majesty, Ochimiri Professor James Otisius Vayase. I am the paramount ruler of the Tiv Nation worldwide. I'm the Tor Tiv. And the custodian of the Tiv tradition and culture. So I want to speak from that position, being the custodian of the tradition of the culture of the people. Clearly means that I know about the tradition and culture and I'm the first authority when it comes to the tradition and culture of the Tiv people worldwide. I want to affirm that was born in Tivland, a grew up in Tivland. I spent most of my years in Tivland. And by the grace of God, I myself also a grandfather. So you can assess, I know clearly that I am already in my 60s. When I was born, I met my father. I also met my grandfather and I interacted with them. So I'm talking about the duration that covers more than a hundred years. And interacting with these people tells me that they would have had all the knowledge passed down and experience and have been told by their own fathers. So this story about the chief man offering his wife to a visitor, to entertain the visitor, has never been practiced in any part of the nation. It's a story that people have framed up of the magic. The chief man that I know, growing up, some people will um, even commit manslaughter if they get to know you are messing up with their wife secretly. So t man is jealous and protective about his wife. So that story is not true. That story is a fabrication. And anybody that wants to test that story, he can come to Tivland and try it. So it's not just what people say, and they, they can even construct a drama. Let the individual come and say that on so so day I visited a chief man, give the name of the person, give the name of the wife that was offered to him. Then we'll know he's telling the truth. It has never happened, and it will not happen. So it's not part of chief tradition. A 
is not part of tea culture. If you learned it, would not imbibe it, we have never practiced it. So if somebody makes a direct allegation and we can hold him, he will have to prove it in court. It's as serious as that. So I state categorically that the story about two people offering their wives to entertain their guests is a fabrication, wicked fabrication, malicious fabrication that has no proof at all. There is no time in the entire history of the Tiff people that wife hospitality was ever practiced. The Tiff man is very receptive and accommodating, but his hospitality has never offered his wife for entertainment. And in a time when the traditions and cultures of Africa are fast eroding, there is need for all true Africans to join hands in the quest for cultural renaissance where every African is proud of their origin, but more so we all must first learn the cultures and traditions of others before seeking to propagate it to other people. Let us not rewrite a people's history to foist on them what they are not and who they are not. Let us write our histories with hearts of love, not hate, because in the end we are one and the same Africa.